So I shot this video over a year ago. This was when I got released from federal prison. Yeah, I was actually cutting off my prison wristband. I had intended on dropping this immediately just to let you guys know I was fine and everything, but my attorneys advised me not to because remember, this is pre-Bruin, pre-PA. I mean, there was a lot up in the air. So it was good legal advice. I'm glad I didn't. However, things have drastically changed since then, and I don't know if I'm going to drop this video immediately and I talk to them and see what they think, or if I'll drop it the day I go to trial. If I drop it the day I go to trial, just stay tuned because then the next video will be either my girl telling you what's going on or me telling you what's going on. So let's get into the video. Understand this gets very emotional for me, so just hang in there. I apologize. I wind up crying once or twice. But let's get through the video. Oh, one more thing. The audio might sound like it's clashing. That's because I was using this microphone back then and it crapped out on me. I have a new microphone which does a different style of audio. So just hang in there. Well, obviously I was able to stay because Florida was pushing to basically either have me like go all the way down to Florida or be locked up in Wisconsin indefinitely until the case was resolved. They were not able to prove that I was a flight risk, so therefore I am able to stay at home. While we go through this case, will I beat the case? Well, the ATF has something like a 97% chance of winning, like that's what their success rate is, so I got right around a 3%. So a snowball's chance in hell at beating this case, I will likely become a convicted felon in my life as we know it will forever be gone. All right, past Matt, get your shit together. You should have known that their conviction rate was propaganda because everything they do is propaganda. So what I didn't know back then is when they were talking about a 97 point whatever conviction rate, they were including everybody that pleads out too. So let's look at the realistic numbers and see what the realistic odds are you yourself would beat a federal case. So, if you're just counting, I mean, just counting, the only cases that actually go to trial, they typically get a 22% conviction rate. So that means you have better than a 75% chance if you should take your case to trial, statistically speaking, you will beat your case. Now, if you take all cases, because they did a study, and 2018, an actual study where they counted the numbers, these aren't just fudged propaganda numbers, out of the 80,000 total cases in that particular year, how many got convictions at trial? Out of all of them, 0.4%. That's less than 1%. I don't know where they got that 97 number from. Well, I do, but... So out of 80,000 cases, 320 they got a conviction on. So that is because 98% of them are plea bargains. So they take that 98%, they count those as convictions, as a win, which I, I, I can see that, but then they include that into what they convict at trial, and that's where they get their number from. It's actually higher than... Uh, 97% it's like 99 point something is the number they throw around there to scare you into taking a plea bargain and it works. We went from an average of 7% of cases going to trial all the way down to 2. And I think in 2019 it was 1%. Just by putting out those propaganda numbers and make everyone think that, oh, the federal government indicted me, I'm like basically guaranteed to go to prison. So everybody quit fighting. The lesson to be learned here is, uh, first, do your own research. Second, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not giving you legal advice. And if you take legal advice from me, you're stealing. Third, is the propaganda was very effective. They went from people knowing that uh, if I actually take this to trial, I'll probably win, to if I take this to trial, I'm definitely going to lose. I need to take the first plea bargain they throw out there. So don't take plea bargains. Just go into trial you have over a 75% chance of winning. Just being indicted in general, should you plan on going to trial, comparing all the numbers, a 0.4%, you're 99% of the time, they won't get a conviction on you. 
out of the total 80,000. Again, you know, only 320 actually get convicted out of 80,000. 1,600 go to trial. So out of 1,600, 320, they get a guilty conviction on them. Keep that in mind next time you're debating on, oh, should I take a plea bargain or whatever, because things are getting drastically worse. They're making up their own rules as they go and making new laws and you wind up, you may wind up finding yourself going in front of trial. Just remember, you don't have a snowball's chance at winning. You actually have a very, 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 very good chance at winning. I will still wind up doing YouTube, but it will no longer be firearms things. The list of things I can't do is quite extensive and it basically encompasses my entire channel. They did say I could still make YouTube videos, but they're insanely limited. I'm not going to talk about the case again for obvious reasons, but I can talk about exactly what happened that very day. Boy, went through my normal routine. I wake up my daughter, start the car, you know, get her ready for school, sitting in the kitchen. Past my house goes what appeared to be some sort of delivery truck. I'm like, okay, it's like seven in the morning. Delivery trucks don't go out that late or that early. Uh, FedEx typically gets in around town around three. UPS is sometime around noon. But who knows, you know, maybe somebody just bought some new delivery vehicle or something like that. That in itself wasn't anything that got me worried. Dropped my daughter off to school. There goes the delivery truck again. And I was starting to notice vehicles that don't belong. I live in a very small town. I can tell you just about every single car by make and model that goes in this town. And there were several cars that were clearly not from town. I've never seen them before. I can't tell you what everyone's license plate number is, but I can pretty much look at a car that's in town and be like, that one goes to this house, that one goes to this house, that one goes to this house. So I'm taking her to school and there's traffic. That doesn't happen. When I take her to school, I'll pass like the school bus, maybe one, maybe two cars, and I know what houses those cars go to, I know where they're going, the house and everything, so I drop her off at school. I kind of idled in front of the school for a second, I'm like, well, maybe today's my day, because I knew it was coming. It was <laughs> overly obvious they wanted me, and they're not gonna put that much resources into trying to get somebody without trying to get them, because I knew that I didn't give them anything they could actually charge me for, likely what's gonna happen is they're gonna ruby ridge my ass. So, that happens, I went uptown because I didn't wanna go home and I didn't wanna just bring a firefight onto the house because my family's there. My daughter's safe now, she's at school. And I sit uptown in front of the post office, nothing happens, still just Vehicles that don't belong keep going by. I'm like, okay, well, maybe it's not for me. Maybe someone in town has been moving large amounts of cocaine or something like that, and maybe that's what's going on. Maybe this isn't for me. So I go home, and I'm sitting in the kitchen, and I can see the road from the kitchen. Just drink my normal Mountain Dew. It's not like the cars were necessarily, like, following me around like I didn't have a train of cars behind me but their patterns just unfamiliar vehicles just kept going by kept going by kept going by I'm like okay it's either me or the neighbor one of us is about to get hit in really soon I'm like well if it's me they already know that even if they charge me with something the case likely won't stick so it's better to have me accidentally die I'm not gonna sit home and risk my woman and my kid. So, I kiss my girl goodbye, grab some equipment, threw it in the car, sat in the car for a second, and I'm like, well, let's make one more post. And I did the post about Rare Breed because I need you guys to understand there doesn't need to be a customer list. If you bought one, they know 
it was you. You're gonna get a visit. So I made that post and I'm like, well, let's see what happens. I guess today's a good day to die, if any. I'd rather do it, you know, away from home. So I sat in there, kind of like, made my peace with God. I'm like, all right, let's do this. Back out of the garage, sure shit, an SUV goes by me and he's just like, I'm like, damn it. They're gonna get me. Today's when it's gonna happen. Another SUV was parked up on the road. I drive past him and he's like, I'm like, yep, definitely about me. Come to the stop sign, that SUV pulls out, another one pulls out, flips on his lights. I'm like, I don't want it to happen right here. This just isn't, doesn't feel right. So I pulled up, I'm like, well, let's go out on flat ground. You know, I'll be as cooperative as possible, but as soon as shots start coming through my back window, I can hit the ground and hopefully at least like defend myself a little bit. I know it's not gonna happen and they're just gonna murder me. So I pull up, I'm like, all right, here's as good a spot as any. Let's see what's gonna fucking happen. Pull over, throw it in park. Van pulls up, the one, the suspicious one I've been seeing driving around. SUV pulls up behind me. You know, the one that popped me had the lights on. Another one pulls up behind him. One pulls in front of me. Another one pulls in front of me. I'm like, here we go. I'm in a crossfire. There's no way I'm going to survive this whatsoever. And then he gets on his horn and he's like, throw your keys out of the vehicle. I'm like, yeah, that's smart. So I don't just throw it in gear and go. Throw my keys out. They're like, shut off the vehicle because it's a key fob. And he probably assumed that I had to shut it off, throw the keys out. So I shut it off, they're like, put your hands out the window and step out. And I stepped out and I'm like, you know, basically prayed to God, I'm like, please take care of my family. And I sat there and I didn't get shot. I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna fucking live. This is amazing, they're giving me the option to live. That was the biggest relief ever. Like, oh my God, like I was there. I was perfectly in the line of sight. There was probably like a 10 man team. I'm guessing, you know, my memory's a little bit fuzzy. I had at least eight machine guns pointed directly at me. I'm in a clear line of fire. There's no obstructions. There's no civilians in the way. And I didn't die. I was just so happy. Like they gave me the option to live through this. Whew. Editing this right now, wow, it just brings you right back. Like, oh, I had a little emotional for a second there watching it. So I'm gonna give you a little emotional break and a little bit of comic relief on a funny side of how this all went down. So I'm standing outside the car, you know, got my hands in the air. And I think, did I have my, no, I didn't have my legs spread. I got my hands in the air and they're like, Turn around and walk towards us. So I turned around, I started walking towards them, and they're like, no, stop right now. Turn around and walk towards us. I'm like, should I turn the wrong way? I started walking towards them again, and they're like, no, stop. Face the other way and walk towards us backwards. I'm like, why didn't you just say that? So then, you know, I walked towards them backwards. But yeah, this whole thing was traumatic. I was so utterly convinced that they were gonna send a federal hit team and I was not gonna live through the experience. I didn't sleep right for like a year. Cause remember, dude got arrested like a year before I did. And I knew this was going to be an example to try to scare people straight. And I thought for sure what I was gonna face was a federal hit squad. As a matter of fact, like I had all my doors and all my windows, the exterior of the house wrapped in rope lights so they couldn't use night vision on me and they would have to kill my power tipping me off. Whew. It, it, it was rough. 
I always went to bed early. I was up by like 3, 4 a.m. every single day, just watching the door like, is today gonna be the day? Nope, didn't happen today. Uh, probably tomorrow, tomorrow will be the day. Next day would come. Nope, nope, didn't happen today. Probably be tomorrow. Like that, that's, that's tough. Dealing with that for an entire year, that, I'm sure you guys could see my attitude in my videos, but man, that broke me down. That got exhausting. I was constantly on high alert, like 24 seven. I'm just glad that they let me live and we get to go through this process diplomatically. Hopefully make the world a better place because of it. Anyway, back to the video. <sighs> so, you know, obviously they cuffed me, stuffed me, like the whole time, like, I was just like, thank you guys. I totally thought you were gonna force me into a 3 a.m. firefight, what I had imagined in my head. Cause I've actually been sleeping on the couch watching the front door so they could easily get me and then hopefully they won't kill the rest of my family. What I imagine happening was like two flashbangs coming in and immediately start shooting and give me no choice but to start returning fire to draw the fire away from everyone else. And it didn't go down that way. Like damn. Basically got a second chance at life, and so they clog tie me and everything, and we go, they take me into the vehicle, and like the whole time going down to Milwaukee, like, obviously, you know, I called my girl, like, hey, I'm going to Florida, because that's what they told me, and that's honestly what I thought, well, come to find out what they're going to do. <laughs> what are you doing? Babe, just let me finish this story. I gotta put it down. Okay. I'll never be able to clear my head. Babe, we have to be careful. Uh, you can watch it later. I I'm recording to. right now. That's fine. I don't care if you put this in there, but you, you're gonna be a good boy. Yes, I'm not gonna. So anyway, we're on our way down to Milwaukee. And like, I'm thanking them the whole way. I'm like, dude, you guys are pros. Like, how you handled this was way, way better than I've seen it handled in even recent history, like recent history. Um, this was amazing. I'm glad you did it. Like, thank you for giving me the opportunity to live. Like, I thought I literally kissed my girlfriend or wife goodbye for the last time when I got in the garage. Like, I thought I was driving off to my death. So, you know, I thank him a bunch and then we're, we pull up to this big ass building. I'm like, oh my God. You guys are dropping me off of the ATF. I'm like, it's your responsibility to get the story out there. You know for a fact I'm not suicidal. You know for a fact I haven't been resisting. If the ATF kills me, you guys, that's your responsibility. You need to get that out there. You need to tell the story. And they're like, ha! I don't want to quote them, but basically they feel similar to us, like about the ATF. So. Yeah, those guys were total pros. It was the U.S. Marshals that came and got me, not the ATF. I think that it was literally the deciding factor on whether I lived or died. So that's awesome. Hey, we're not supposed to say the word ATF. It, I need to for this. This will be the last video. I would just say, like, uh, replace it all. Like, just go beep, beep every time you say that word. Okay, that's actually a good idea. So anyway, they, they dropped me off and then that's about as far as I can tell the story because after that it starts talking about things that could actually affect the case. But, so that's what happened and yeah, I've known for quite some time my number was going to get pulled. What I didn't know is that I would survive the incident. I thought when they pulled my number it would be permanently forever. And yeah, that was pretty terrifying. I've been able to sleep a lot lately. I am better now. Like, yes, this video was hard to make because I was, like, telling you, like, what was actually going through my head at the time. But other than that, like, just appreciate all your guys' support. Uh, they do have a GoFundMe going for me. Uh, the link will be in the description. Obviously, since that video was filmed, the GoFundMe was shut down. You can still support me by going to OnlyTacticalFans.com at Shopify and buy merchandise from there. We're pretty good right now. However... Should things go sideways and I have to go through appeals court in that, then we will need to set up like some sort of give, send, go or go fund me again. In which case my girl will put a video out after that happens, should it happen. 
Uh, it looks like Judgment Day is sometime before February 10th, which is like two weeks from now, three weeks from now, something like that. Anyway, so yeah, I appreciate all you guys' support. I don't know how I would have done this without you guys helping me. It would have been much harder. And I see why so many people take plea bargains because you're just put into a position where you have no choice. They typically seize all your assets. They typically hold you in prison until you go to trial so you have no opportunity to get any more money. It's bad. Like, being indicted destroys lives. Anyway. Stay healthy, stay alive, guys.